，三天一定死，迟到没没有希望。第四天，慢慢的可以起飞。第五天，飞走了，啊，入法界了，哈、啊，真的是这样的。每年每年拜梁皇禅，哎呀，第二天第三天，阿弥陀佛，真的。Okay, let's see. Now we have to go through all the. Did that work? It didn't work. I, oh, what are we gonna do? Help! It's plugged in. Is it on your end? Maybe. Everything is normal. We can do it without the the projector, but it's more fun to if we can see things. Mm -hmm. Recording in progress. You have to make me co-host again. Zoom is on is fine, so they can use the HDMI to our computer and then Zoom is still seeing your screen. Everyone seeing your Zoom screen. Ah, uh, what thing? But all. <laughs> you just speak me to our computer. Ah. Just share your screen as normal. Okay. So Zoom will be on there. Okay. So everyone will see your screen. Okay. Get to do it again. <laughs> okay. Ignore error. Carbon copy cover. Set up. Okay. Recording in progress. Okay. 
Okay, so um, can we have the Dharma request or somebody who knows it or give them the paper? They have to, other, they're used to reading the, yeah.
好的，啊，师父上人，各位师兄，大家，阿弥陀佛 ，Venerable Master, Dharma friends, Good evening, welcome to our Sutra lecture. Uh, if we don't have the slides, uh, what we do have is a sound. We have a voice, and you think about the Buddha. The Buddha had no slide projector, right? The Buddha never had a a, a uh, Buddha never had a PPT. Uh, he only had his voice, and yet he was able to communicate with everyone. So we will rely on the sound. We'd like to respectfully acknowledge the Kumbhumeri people of the Ugambi language region as traditional storytellers and custodians of the land here where our monastery is located. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and to First Nations people whose sovereignty was never ceded. 就说我们恭敬地承认与刚被遇阻的公布马里人，是我们寺院所在地的传统叙事和守护人。我们向过去、现在和未来的长者们致敬，并且向所有从未放弃主权与第一民族的原住民致敬。Okay, there we go. And the Pomo people and the Ohlone people, you've all seen these slides. You can visualize what I'm seeing here. We have right now 67 people listening online, so they can see my, my slides. It's just those of us here in the hall who can't. Bell sound wide resounds throughout a hundred million worlds. A Buddha's lie is heard and spread all throughout the triple world. The wondrous sounds that everywhere fill the Dharma realm with peace. May those who hear it gain the strength to follow in faith the Buddha's path. 众生传三千劫内，佛法扬万亿国中，共讯其法界和平，利益报他那后者。Okay. Now the、uh, the fact that I don't have my mic is our is our sound set up correct? Do I need to turn on the mic or not? We're.、Uh, I have the、uh, closing of the.、Uh, what's it say? It's called. All good. Okay. All, all right. So、uh, let's see now. You all have to look at me, and I get to look at all of you because there's no screen. How about that? So can you all see me over there? Way, way. Ami, tofu. <laughs> It's very special to have all of you、uh, here. Many of you, maybe most of you, took the lay bodhisattva precepts. Oh boy!、Uh, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Bought the eightfold precepts, not the lay bodhi. The eightfold precepts. Some of you will take the bodhisattva precepts.
Okay. Sound is okay. Okay. So um, this is very special. This is the these are the conditioners that allow for inner transformation. It's like living in a park, but it's better than a park. It is a pure, we call it a weak place, Dao It is truly a Dao a place where a Dao can be cultivated, where it grows inside. Um, some of our, some of my neighbors who live in the same building with me get to see this afternoon we had 20 cockatoos come for, for dinner. <laughs> and I have to soft touch, and I, no matter how much I feed them, they want more, and they know that they just stand in there. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, so feed them more, and they don't need them. They're they're very happy to have a bite or two, and they actually it's very interesting. In in one day. These birds come from a national goes in other five miles and in a national park, uh, which is completely wild. There's no no They go deep into that park and they find a tree and they come together on a squawking tree. In the morning, there is a signal, and they come pouring out of the park along Bonogan Road, and they pass overhead. You can see them going into town. They have learned this is one stop. This is their breakfast stop. And if I feed them, they get a few mouthfuls of bird seed. And if I don't, they go on into, um, I'm not sure quite where it might be, into Madhuraba, it might be into Robina, somewhere. But then they come back across, and uh, it's only in the last few years they've been stopping here. Before that, we hand out bird seed the way we do now. Now we have 20 kilogram bags of bird seed last one week. <laughs> uh, and oh my goodness. So, but the, uh, the birds are quite wonderful. The, uh, there are several who are sick, who have beacon feather disease, and now we'll, we'll talk about that another day. So this is uh, one, of the, one of the aspects of living here at the Gold Coast Dharma realm that is uh, unexpected, is we get to see Australia's native animals in almost a natural state. That is to say, human interaction with them has been very, very little. Very little. They mostly know humans as good because <laughs> uh, they haven't encountered them and so their lives have not been interrupted by people so to be able to see these birds is quite quite amazing there are uh, theories among zoologists and ornithologists the ones who study birds there are theories that bird song began in Australia. That the birds' ability, all birds' ability to cheep, cheep, chirp, chirp, squawk, squawk, began in Australia. 
thousands and thousands of years ago and then spread out when Australia used to be connected to what is now Indonesia, the Philippines, all of the archipelago on up to Singapore, Malaysia, Southeast Asia. It was all Gaia. It was all Oceania. And uh, we, I've, I ha I'm reading about it myself, but the very interesting theory. So when we hear the sounds of the birds here in this pure way place, we're hearing sounds that have been alive at the dawn of time. When it's the first time there were humans here to hear nature, these sounds were there, unchanged. So we are hearing a timeless sound. And uh, I'll point out one of them, those of us living at, here at 102 and living next door just down the hill here for the women's place. Twice a day, have you identified the kookaburras? Kookaburras before sunrise, they're there's a family and they go, they're called Hui Xiao Jernil, laughing kookaburras. They laugh. And then just about, well, let's see, it's now 724. It was about an hour ago. The kookaburras sang their evening song. It is very regular. They call it the Bushman's alarm clock. It is very precise. Hunjun, twice a day, before sunrise, after sunset, you can hear the kookaburras. And it goes off all over Australia at the same time. And this, they, they say, you know, they, they talk to astronauts and they went to all the different astronauts and astronauts now come from almost every country. Right. And they ask the astronaut, they said, what would be the, the one thing that you miss when you're out in the International Space Station? The one thing that when you experience it, you know your home on planet Earth. What is the one thing? Okay, they ask a Japanese astronaut. What do the Japanese astronauts say? Anybody guess? Was it miso soup? Was it sake? It was umeboshi plums. Swanmei umeboshi. That flavor of umeboshi plums, he said, was the thing that he knew was home for him. And they asked the American astronaut, you know what he said? He said, the sound of rock and roll coming out of my car radio. Right? Coming out of the radio. That was the thing that he knew he was home when he was driving down the highway listening to rock and roll in his car radio. When they asked the Australian astronaut, what was their answer? The sound of the kookaburra twice a day that it, it, it had been as soon as his ears were ears after nine months in his mother's womb he was hearing kookaburras twice a day every day of his life so you can when you hear them once you hear them you never forget them so you can if you're up early after after zalco right there uh, the kookaburras are singing their song so today I fed six kookaburras. They, uh, this is, there are two new ones who are now five months old. They are raised from eggs by their parents. And their parents, I've now been part of three generations of kookaburras from this one pair of father and mother. And uh, the two new babies that are brand new have now become independent. They can feed themselves and they're competing with mom and dad for the veggie ham, su ho tui, that I feed them. So, Sam, I've only got two days left of su ho tui. <laughs> I have to get a new, <laughs> because why? There are kurawangs. Kurawangs are these large black birds that have a beautiful cry. They compete with the kookaburras for the veggie ham. So it, when there's eight birds to feed, six kookaburras and two kurawangs, it goes fast. So. Sam is my, my uh, drug pusher. He's the, the contact guy. He's the one here. My contact. The birds know him very well. So, Okay, now, here's what I wanted to talk about tonight. Um, since we don't have the pictures, um, I think I'll, I'll talk to some principals, and I want to share a song that I know many of you know. 
the the principles is when you f- approach a, a true a, a true good and wise advisor, um, someone who they call them Guo Lai Ren, someone who has gone and come back, someone who knows the way to Buddhahood and back. You learn as much from the daily things that come up that may not be in the sutras as you do from, you know, the, the Four Noble Truths, the Eightfold Path, the Twelve Links, the Six Paramitas, and all the, the official Buddha Dharma. When we first, we young American hippies in San Francisco in the 1970s, first got close to Master Xuanhua, we did learn about the standard, you know, Si Di Ba Zhang Dao Shi Ren Yuan Liu Bo Luo Mi, you know, we learned those. But also simply by listening to how Shifu would teach us every day, we learned so much that uh, you only get when you draw near a teacher who you could say has been perfumed in the, the fragrance of the Mahayana. Shifu was trained in the Tiantai Jiao Guan, in the Tiantai tradition of the Jiao Zong, in a formal way. His generation was the last generation trained in China before what in China they call it Jie Fang, right? Uh, what the, before the, the bamboo curtain fell before the communists took over in China. Um, so Shifu was sent by Master Xu Yun out of China to Hong Kong. And he told him to take Han Chuan Fu Jiao, Chinese Buddhism, to the Western Hemisphere. Those were his instructions to Shifu. So Shifu got out in 1949 to Hong Kong, spent 10 years in Hong Kong, then in 1961 came to Australia. But he got to Sydney and he discovered obstacles. What were the obstacles? Very interesting. Things you couldn't imagine. We knew an old gentleman named Graham Lyle, who was a friend to many of us. He was uh, an old Aussie Buddhist. And he was a young man and saw Master Xuanhua. He was, I think it was his first year uh, as, um, was actually Leyen is here. She would know all these details so she can fact check me. I believe he was his, Graham Lyle's first year as the head of the Buddhist Association of New South Wales, which at the time was maybe five or six people, very small group. But, among those people was a woman from Russia who considered herself a Buddhist and she saw Master Xuanhua come and said, huh, look at him. He is a parasite. He begs for his food. He takes others' strength. Don't give him anything. It's bad for him to be a parasite. You shouldn't support him, she said, based on some Marxist principle of each according to his labor or something. Shifu got no offerings in Sydney. And he is, you know, Dong si bu pan yuan, e si bu hua yuan, chong si bu chou yuan, right? Freezing to death, we do not scheme. Starving to death, we do not beg. Dying of poverty, we ask for nothing. He would never say, "Um, I'm hungry. (laughs) <laughs> so it was a stalemate and he just was patient and endured this woman who saw Sangha as parasites. She had no concept of Sangha as field of blessings that you can make a better life for yourself if you share some of your food with monks and nuns. As a result, Shifu got no support. 
he finally found a, uh, a Chinese layman who saw him and said, oh my goodness, would you please come to our house so that we can offer you a meal? And in conversation, Shurfu explained. Anyway, so after nine months, Shurfu went back to Hong Kong and then uh, at the invitation of uh, Tan Mu Jie, Madalena Tan, and her sister Stella, they invited Master Hua to San Francisco. 1962 was when he first came. All right, so when you're around a true Shan Zhishi, the kind of things he says, almost in the corners of the actual sutra lectures, are some of the things that make the Buddha Dharma come home. One of those things is Pu Xin, the Bodhi resolve, the mind, the thought for enlightenment. Why do I pick? Can you? Oh, there we go. Thank you. So, um, Shurfu would talk about it, and he would also say things like, what else? You would hear Shurfu say things like, He would say, and we would go, uh-huh, Shurfu, what's that? Don't make a mistake in cause and effect. He would say, You really want to increase your wholesome merit and virtue. And we go, okay, Shurfu, Do more merit and virtue. And he would say, You want to plant more blessings, you know. And these are the kind of things that a monk exhorts. It's the bread and butter, you could say. It's the tofu and broccoli of cultivation. But if you don't have a teacher, you don't hear these things. And of these, all of these, we would hear them so often. Uh, he would say, you know? And then he would say things about repentance. In repentance, he would say things like, what would it, he would say, uh, things like, uh, he would say, these offenses that could fill up heaven and earth once you repent are all wiped away. You would say, you know, and we go, wow, that sounds good. That sounds positive. I like that. You know, <laughs> enough of that. I don't want to hear that. You know? So, okay. So all of these phrases we would hear, did we understand them? No, but we heard them over and over. And the one that I want to share tonight has come up a lot in our repentance is this idea of the putishin, the Bodhi resolve. What in the world is the Bodhi resolve and why is it so important? Why does the Avatamsaka Sutra spend so much time talking about the Guangda putishin, the big vast Bodhi resolve? Now, if you ask uh, a Chinese monk or nun, What do you call the Bodhi Resolve? What is it? Define the Bodhi Resolve. They will say, oh, oh, that's easy. And then they'll nod. Hmm? You know, and you go, oh, thank you. Uh, sounds like God in heaven. And I thought about, and when I would hear that, I would be like, I'm not satisfied. I still don't understand. And yet he would repeat it over and over. He would say, You know, I'm waiting for you bowing monks to really make the Bodhi resolve. And we go, okay, Shrivo, okay, okay, wait, uh, me too, Shrivo, have I done it yet? You know, let me know when I do it, please, you know, 
mysterious. It's a mystery. What is the putishin? What is the bodhi result? And he would repeat it over and over again, and we clearly didn't understand it. And then, no help. Shang cheng fo dao xia hua zhong cheng. What does that mean? Above accomplishing the Buddha way, below teaching living being. And I pondered on it. I thought about it. And I wondered about it because he repeated it so many times. Clearly, it was important, but clearly, didn't understand. So, I, uh, one of the things that, that Master Hua did when our uh, pilgrimage, Three Steps on Bao, reached City of 10,000 Buddhas, in the next week, uh, Shifu invited one of his Dharma friends, a monk from Singapore named Hui Sung, Hui Sung Lao Fa Shi. I don't know if any of you met or know Hui Sung Lao Fa Shi at Guanda. He is an old Singaporean monk at a place called Fu Hui Si in Chen Fu Si ba, Wan Fu Si in in uh, Singapore. But he also had a monastery in San Francisco called Fu Hui Si. Now, um, Master Hui Sung was trained in the Tian Tai Jiao Guan. In fact, he was one of the holding the lineage. He was one of the Li Dai Zhu uh, Shi of the Tian Tai Jiao Guan. He could really lecture. Oh, he was, he knew a hundred stories. Just he, his stories just never stopped. He would talk about, oh, you know, uh, he would launch into a story and you would hear it, you'd be interested, just to make his points. Shifu said, he said, please explain for my monks, meaning the Sangha at CTDB. So, Master Hui Sung began a series explaining an essay called Chen Fa Puti Xin, the exhortation to make the Bodhi resolve. What was this? This was an essay written at the end of the Ming dynasty and the start of the Qing dynasty by a monk called Xing An Da Shi. Xing An Da Shi. And it's he uh, he was a magical, oh, there we go, look at that. You did it. Yay. But it's funny. Why is it funny? Let's see. It's done, uh, it's only, it's squeezed into the screen. Okay, all right. So, uh, here we go. Hi, everybody. So, um, Xing An Dashi wrote this essay, and he, uh, he is a remarkable monk. Uh, I need to speed up my talk here. I'm running out of time. Um, so, the, um, he gave eight kinds of putishin, and then he gave ten reasons why people fa da putishin, why they make the Bodhi resolve. And those reasons, the ten, very interesting. The first one was nian for chung. And we think about the Buddha's kindness to us, chung, and his weighty kindness by explaining the Dharma. And we decide, yeah, I want to get enlightened. I would like to wake up. I would like to end suffering. I'd like to have wisdom and compassion. Then number two was nian fumu an. Think of the kindness of your parents. Oh, yeah, my relationship with my parents. Some of you have your parents with you right here. How wonderful. The third one was nian shi zhang an. Thinking of the goodness that came to us from teachers. Knowledge, how to live as a person. Uh, shi is maybe monks and nuns. Zhang is worldly teachers, professors, faculty, uh, instructors, mentors. The next one was Nian Shi Zhu, and he's particularly for monks and nuns, the kindness of donors who make it possible for us to eat every day. We don't work for our food, 
we work and people feed us, right? The next one was Nian Zhong Sheng An, who give us a reason to cultivate every day. So Nian Fu Zhong An, Nian Fu Mu An, Nian Shi Zhang An, Nian Shi Zhu An, Nian Zhong Sheng An. Half, half of the reasons for the Bodhi resolve come from relationships. And the relationships are based on kindness, having been given to, things that people give us, wisdom, instructions, knowledge, food, our bodies, the Buddha Dharma, right? So he said, if you move into your heart and recognize how much I've been given to, it's a reason to want to wake up in order to Okay, let's go back to that Shang Cheng Fu Dao Xia Hua Zhong Sheng idea. Ah, here's our Bodhi Resolve essay. Let's see now. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Here we go. Advance Australia Fair. I'm learning the. Uh, National Anthem of Australia, because tomorrow I become an Australian. Yay! How about that? So here we go. Uh, share my screen. Here we are. Here it is right here. This idea can... i got to make it bigger. All right. Way bigger. Bigger yet. All right. There we go. Here's the Chinese. Shang Cheng Fu Dao. You see it? Okay. Shang Cheng Fu Dao. Xia Hua Zhong Sheng. It's very funny because the way it's, if you only take it character by character, what it says is the Bodhi resolve means that I have to go up somewhere to accomplish Buddhahood, and then I have to go down somewhere to teach living beings. And it took me the longest time to think about that until I realized that they say the Buddha, living beings, and my mind are one thing. With that clue, this transforms. Shang becomes ultimately Jing, the highest meaning the best. Ultimately, my goal is to become a Buddha. Right? The Shang is not a direction, it's time. My highest, the ultimate, the best goal of my life, the best thing I can imagine doing is not making a million dollars or a billion dollars. That wouldn't, that's nothing wrong with that, but that's, that'll come and go, right? It's not to marry the most beautiful wife, to marry the most handsome husband, to become a movie star, not. It's not to get a $20,000 Hermes handbag, you know, that's not the ultimate goal. It's to, is to experience perfect wisdom. That is to say, become a Buddha, right? Think of it that way. What's a Buddha? Well, a Buddha is greatly wise is to have real wisdom. So then I know how to go through my day. I know how to raise my kids. I know how to deal with my aging parents. I know how to balance Buddha Dharma and the world. If I have real wisdom, that's Shang Cheng Fu Dao. It's not up there, it's in here. Okay, well, what about that second part? It's Dang Xia. Xia is immediately, right now. 
Right now, get to work with those relationships in my life. The Buddha, my parents, my teachers, donors, living beings, right? My own Xi Qi Mao Bing. Those are the living beings of my own nature. Those are the Zhong Sheng that I have to Hua, right? It's not directional, it's immediate. So here's the Bodhi resolve. My ultimate purpose is to realize wisdom. I can do that by getting to work now and resolving my closest relationships to compassion, with compassion. Right? That's the Bodhi resolve. I need to make this smaller so you can photograph it all with a single screen here. This is the Bodhi resolve. When you see it this way, it's like, oh, now I think I have a clue why Shifu was talking about it. My ultimate purpose is to realize wisdom. Shang Cheng Fu Dao. I can do that by Xia Hua Zhong Sheng, getting to work now, Dang Xia, resolving my closest relationships with compassion. Hua Zhong Sheng, not I'm going to teach you. I don't want to be taught by you. That sounds scary, right? I want you to use kindness to help me understand my problems so I can become a Buddha too, right? That is Shang Cheng Fu Dao, Xia Hua Zhong Sheng. With that clue, it was like, oh my goodness, that makes sense to me. So I want to ask all of you, you've given an entire week of your life to come to GCDR. If you were to ask yourself, what is my highest potential? What is my highest potential? How do I realize it? What is in the way of that realization? Right? So what is, what is my highest potential? Can I be a Buddha? Oh no, that, that's actually, uh, I'm, I'm the middle child. My, maybe my Gugu, maybe my Jie she's the one. I'm the, I don't have that. Yes, you do. We all do. You know, oh, I'm just an employee. Maybe my boss or maybe the executive vice president, he could. She, but not me. No, no, no. The potential to realize Buddhahood is in every one of us. It's just that we didn't think about it. Nobody said, you can become a Buddha now. Why are you waiting, right? And the answer is, well, I was told that I'm just a girl. Right? Born in Taiwan, one of several sisters. I can't become a Buddha. I have to be good to my husband. My husband's a mess, you know. My husband's so unfaithful, you know. So, yeah, none of that, none of that matters. It's, what is my potential? Guys say, oh, well, you know, if I'd had a better education, but there wasn't money at home to send me to school, or I took the Lian Kao and it didn't turn out so good. That's not the issue. That's not it, right? What is my highest potential? How do I realize it? Realizing that potential has to do with my relationships. It has to do with my understanding of the Dharma, my relationship with my parents, with my teachers, with living beings, donors, right? So. This is true for monks and nuns. This is true for lay people. This is fundamental to understanding the Han Chuan Fu Jiao Pu Sa Dao. This is the Bodhisattva path. When you go to the Thai forest tradition, do they talk about the Puti Xin? No. This is our own Han Chuan Fu Jiao tradition. The Bodhisattva path talks about Hua Zhong Sheng Cheng Fu Dao. 
This is our particular dharma. It's amazing. So, Sudana, Shansai Tongzi, he is in the Huayanjing, the hero. He is the one who goes all the way to Buddhahood in one life. 52, 53 teachers, Shansai Tongzi, Wu Shi San San, right? 53 teachers. Every single one of them, he goes to them and he says, Please teach me. They say, Shan Nan Si, Rui Fa Da Pu Ti Xin Pao. Good man, have you made the Bodhi resolve yet? He goes, Wei, what's Ao Yijing Fa Da Pu Ti Xin? Yes, I have. I have made the Bodhi resolve. They go, Oh, good. Okay, well, let's go. Let's teach. I want you to learn my Fa Man, my special Jie Tuo Man, my, dharma, my liberation door. So, to understand Shi Fu's teaching on the Pusa Dao, you have to investigate what is the Bodhi result. This is really the first step. And it begins with you, no matter young man, young woman, old man, old woman, layman, monk or nun, what is my highest potential? What could I become? Challenge yourself and then say, how do I get there? Here is the Bodhisattva's answer. Your highest potential is Buddhahood, and you get there by working with your relationships in your own mind. That's where Buddhahood is waiting. Okay? So when I understood that, it was like, oh, that's, maybe that's why Shurfu hit us over the head with the Putishin so much. Right? This is really important. And you only get it when you have a true Shanjushu around you who can, who knows the time, who knows what you can, uh, what you can understand in order to become his true disciple. Okay, now, um, speaking of great compassion, uh, there is a song that I wanted to share. This is, we're not studying Guan Yin so much right now, but this is a, a particularly wonderful Guan Yin Bodhisattva song that many of you like. In fact, it's so popular here at Gold Coast that uh, we had our New Year's celebration and the choir sang it back to us. <laughs> the Gold Coast choir sang this song. So I wanted to uh, have everybody sing along tonight because it's easy to learn. The chorus goes like this, this part right here. She carries me, she carries me, she carries me to the other side. She carries me. She carries me, she carries me to the other side. I bet you can do it. Try it. It's, it's so nice. Ta du wo, ta du wo, ta du wo dao bi an. Okay? She is a bow. She is a light. High on a hill in the dark of night, she is a way, she is the deep, she is the dark where the angels sleep when all is still. Where peace abides, she carries me to the other side. Here we go, your turn. She carries me, she carries me, she carries me to the other side. She carries me. We do it two times, huh? She carries me. She carries me to the other side. 
And though I walk through valleys deep and shadows chase me in my sleep on rocky cliffs I stand alone I have no name I have no home With broken wings I long to fly She carries me To the other side Here we go, your turn She carries me She carries me she carries me to the other side. She carries me. She carries me. She carries me to the other side. A thousand eyes, a thousand eyes, a thousand ears to hear my cry. She is the gate, she is the door, she leads me through and back once more when day has dawned when death is nigh she carries me to the other side okay last chance she carries me she carries me she carries me to the other side. She carries me. She carries me. She carries me to the other side. Sounds really good when everybody sings together, huh? Okay. That's not my song. That's Jennifer Berezan's song. I wish I had written it, but she is a friend of mine from Cal a Canadian songwriter who lives in Berkeley, California. And people tell me, uh, wherever we sing that song, East and West, that that carries Guanyin Bodhisattva's true spirit of great compassion. So, all righty. Uh, here's our dedication of merit, and we will finish tonight and see you again tomorrow. We're going to look uh, into more of these topics uh, that pop up in the monastery around the cultivation of the Bodhisattva path. Right? Here we go. Please make a wish how you want to dedicate your merit. May every living be our minds as one and radiant with light. Share the fruits of peace with hearts of goodness, luminous and bright. If people hear and see how hands and hearts can find in giving, unity may our minds away to great compassion wisdom and to joy may kindness find reward may all who sorrow 
grieve their grief and pain. May this boundless light dispel the darkness of our endless night. Because our hearts are one, this world of pain turns into paradise. May all become compassionate and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. Okay, wow, when everybody sings together, it sounds so good. Of course, you all have been practicing singing together every day, haven't you? Yeah, this is a day-long choir. All right, should we bow to the Buddha from right where we are? Woman Jo Shang for San Wen Shin Li. Right? Bow in respect to the Venerable Master. Hada, okay, we'll see you all tomorrow, tomorrow night. Chayo, Amitofo, Daja. Ah, get some rest. You're going to need lots of strength for tomorrow. <laughs> Peace.